today we're having somebody pretty cool come through the farm. His name is John Pecchia and he is the manager of the Mushroom Research Center at Penn State University. He's also director of the Mushroom Spawn Lab. Um, so Penn State's cool. They are the only university in the United States right now that has a mushroom research lab. Now, while a lot of their research is focused on primarily agaricus and button mushroom farming, um, you know, they are starting to look into specialty mushrooms a little bit further. And uh, John is that guy. He's the one who is kind of at the forefront of the research center and is the guy who is also in the forefront of the um, disease and pest management um, research that they're working on there at Penn State. Now he's going to fill you in a little bit more about what they're doing up there. Um, so they have three um, professors, or associate professors and colleagues from the University of Maryland tagging along today with John and they're going to be checking out our farm and seeing a little bit more about what we do and how we help facilitate and give some assistance to smaller and beginning farms. So stick around, check it out. Hopefully they'll be willing to sit down here and chat with us a little bit and uh, we'll go from there. You guys don't mind, Drew. No. Is that all right, guys? Yeah, okay. Public servants. We awesome. Public there. servants here, guys. <laughs> we got John Pecchia, right? Yes. Is that how you say it? We with it. Uh, Penn State University here and a couple of folks from the University of Maryland here to check out the farm. We are just chatting about small farms and getting started they're here looking to help small farms in maryland get started so we're just chatting about you know the ins and outs of cultivation so as you guys are saying go ahead so i'm just curious how what did you get started growing in you know how did you get started for them as they're trying to work with yeah so so we definitely got started more on a local scale so and i think that's what you'll find most people start doing is they they get in with local farmers markets local chefs and um, really we started as a basement operation and that's what you see most people doing um, I kind of got into it by the means of thinking it was a very small scale thing that can be profitable you know and now here we are but um, for a lot of people that's how it starts you know people in their basements garages um, you know Martha tents little uh, DIY rooms and stuff like that so so how many employees? Just you now? Or you got so we have three employees. Um, they're pretty much full time at this point, and you know we kind of all share the workload. You know, somebody kind of watches spawn production, somebody watches um, substrate production, and we all pitch in elsewhere. So, so if the small farmers are coming to you, mm -hmm. and they're, you're, you're helping them out with a kind of a, a kit, ready to go substrate, ready to already inoculated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so our main gig is the ready to fruit substrate. So it's they're ten pound blocks made of soy and uh, sawdust. So once they're fully colonized, we'll sterilize them, inoculate them here. Once they're fully colonized, we pack them into a big cooler and we ship them out. It's interesting. Okay. Transition Very cool. to high value crop. And so now it's urban farming is my county's highly rapidly developing. Mm -hmm. So Annapolis is kind of center of my county, down yeah. below between DC and Washington, mm -hmm. and Baltimore. And uh, so now the, I think the only chance I have of saving agriculture is county is to think about high value intensified small operations mm -hmm. so, and that's exactly how I thought of it when I got into it because it is a high value crop I mean you can produce substrate for you know a couple of dollars maybe three or four dollars a block and potentially yield you know thirty dollars to forty dollars worth of mushrooms off that block now there's a lot of little things in between that that obviously are you know little uh, snags in the process but I mean, it's totally doable for, for a lot of people to start, start small. I have a lot of people who were interested in it. I had no idea how to, to, you know, what to teach them, how to begin or what have you. So it's really kind of this team that we put together that's kind mm -hmm. of kind of thinking what we're going to try to initiate that, the extension uh, process of helping people do some research, get something started to help initiate the sports in their industry. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, my biggest resource has been the FSA, really. Um, I mean, they're just the best to work with as far as beginning farmers because when I started I had no credit no you know no business background per se um, I had worked for other small businesses but you know at the same time I didn't know know where to get funding or where to go from there so they were extremely helpful I know a lot of people that are interested in 
lot of our growers struggle with getting that like two, three years experience that FSA requires. Mm -hmm. Do you run into that problem? Yeah, so that's kind of, that's how we ended up purchasing this place mm -hmm. through, a, through a farm ownership loan through the FSA. And um, <clears throat> yeah, with the first three years we were totally farmers markets and I mean, it doesn't take a lot of showing income to be able to pay for a farm for it because their their loans are so low interest, you know. So I mean, at the time we were probably only grossing sixty or seventy thousand dollars, and we were able to get a place that has you know a two thousand dollar mortgage on it. So, so you know, it, it, the odds are definitely in your favor using the FSA, but you just have to get to that point and and really grind those first couple of years to make it happen. So you have a partner then or a partnership? No, nope, just me. Just you. Just me. Yeah. Yeah. So we started out farmers markets. We're hitting restaurants too or primarily just the markets? Just our area is not very keen on you know on, on, on nice mush on nice mushrooms and on nice restaurants. You know, yeah. we're kind of out here in the sticks. So, you know, a place like Annapolis or where you have that reach to Baltimore and DC, um, there's just so much more potential. And that's why kind of fell upon the ready to food substrate because there are so many people who are closer to metropolitan areas who can you know service those kind of restaurants and markets you know a market here may we may gross two or three hundred dollars where a market there they may do a couple of thousand dollars you know so so your current business model people ordering online yeah contacting? people people contacting us directly for ready to food substrate is really the the, the any, any size orders you're sending out? Usually uh, we have a 50 block minimum for wholesale stuff, you know, so just, and that's just to help us and to help other people. Cause uh, what you'll find is a lot of people, they just want to dip their toes in a little bit and you're not going to be profitable. This is kind of a quantity business. You, you can't be profitable doing, you know, five or six blocks at a time and, and trying to offload them. You have to kind of get into that groove of growing weekly, selling weekly, creating a steady income stream. So do you truck to them? Like if you have that order, that size body, Yeah, yeah. So we, we have a large logistics network and we ship everything from here um, pretty much all the way out to the Midwest. Uh, the West Coast is really tough to hit because we are shipping live mycelium. So it's only going to last so long, especially in the heat of summer you know, in a hot truck. Um, but we've had great success and really worked hard to find logistics companies who are on time and, and work in a timely manner, you know. So, so you're that, not shipping refrigerators? No refrigerated right now. We just have not found the, uh, the, the deals on refrigeration that we've wanted yet to make it worthwhile for farmers, you know. You have to think, like, we're farming, they're farming. So, you know, there's some, there's some holdups there for would, sure. Would it make sense to add your own trucking line? Like, it could. It would make sense if we were working maybe down towards um, the Kenneth Square area or something like that where we were shipping enough for it to make sense. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, like I said, we've only been here one year, so we're really just getting into large commercial scale type stuff. Okay. So. Have you marketed or is it word of mouth? On it's all been really word of mouth and just our website up until this point. Yeah. Um, you know, people people just hear about us through other growers and, and it's kind of just grown through there. So. so after the WNEP article, you get a lot of people just want three or four bags? Yes, <laughs> you would have no idea. <laughs> it's the, one of the most difficult things because, you know, we're not really set up to do retail. We're set up to yeah. do the wholesale stuff. So it makes it hard sometimes. Would you do that though if they came to your place? Oh yeah, people, yeah. there's been like four or five people <laughs> just here today that have stopped, you know. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so there's no so cash out the door, couple bags go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sense. A little bit of money on side, you know. It's not gonna turn it down, and people will absolutely love it. I mean, that's how people get into this is by buying one or two kits, and then. So at a market, market now, you're really you're taking your substrate kits right to market, right? Yeah, so we sell the substrate kits to market, but we can grow. We grow out our own substrate yeah, okay. in a grow room here as well, just yeah, to make sure that everything is kosher, that we're seeing the yields that we want to see. And you know, just yeah. to have data to. Are you still you know, selling it to markets, or are you don't have time for that? We're still debating it. It's uh, we do one good one right now, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Just the staffing, and when you're not doing it yourself, uh, Williamsport, Williams Williamsport is out. Yeah. That's out his way a little bit further. Yeah. But um, it's a great market, but it's just staffing it. You know, it's an hour away at six in the morning, so we're uh, trying to just make it happen. Maybe without doing that so far. We're out and half of both Harrison, right? Yeah, hour, yeah, hour and a half, hour, hour 15. It's not too bad. Not too bad. You're buying all commercial spawn? So we make all of our spawn. You're making all your own yeah, spawn. so we make all of our own spawn, and that's been really a key to 
profit and keeping us going because um, the first couple of years we were purchasing uh, commercial spawn and it just wasn't reliable getting it shipped to you. Um, you're relying on somebody else's you know, work ethic and all of that to make sure that all of these meticulous steps are, are in line and, and we just didn't find that to be doable, you know. So, so we make all of our own cultures, we have our own culture bank and expand everything from there. You're going Yeah, yeah, I mean, I packed it in. It's all YouTube too, you know. That's, that's a great thing. That's, a, that's why I wanted to start my own channel, just to, you know, pass the knowledge along and, you know, help others because that's literally the only place I found any helpful knowledge as far as like, being able to watch somebody do it and you know replicate it essentially. Well, we're so. probably looking forward to inviting you down to one of our meetings. In we're Maryland. absolutely welcome, okay. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> for sure. That's what the growers would love to hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. people just haven't, you know, when you haven't experienced it, it just sounds like such a crazy thing. Yeah. But um, I mean, mushrooms are more popular than ever, and people are just so enthusiastic about it that's what I love you know it's it's not like growing microgreens you know people are like microgreens but they're not head over heels like they are for mushrooms but yeah if you guys want to come in we'll kind of explain the process from top to bottom how we how we produce spawn um, substrate and just the setup of the facility really Um, they'll sit here for two to eight weeks depending on the species and once they're fully colonized we'll pack them into these boxes, put them in the cooler and on Mondays we pack up the blocks and the truck will come and we'll ship them out. You feed them cool in your boat in the summer? Yep, yep, there's in-floor heat in the building um, and there's also two five-ton air conditioning units which um, be great for the, for the air conditioning. Um, the spray foam was honestly the best best decision I made as far as the, the structure itself. It's been worth every penny and, you know, so starting growers, I, I always, heating and cooling, I mean, that's one of the biggest things. If you don't have proper heating and cooling in your grow room and your incubation area, you might as well just, you know, expect a lot of problems because the mycelium and, and the microbes really get along well at a certain temperature and others, you're gonna just have tons of mold issues and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the blocks produce their own heat as well, so you're, you're combating that. For about every ton of substrate, you're getting like almost a thousand watts of heat put out, which is, adds up, you know. So, but yeah, come on over here. I'll show you the spawn lab. That's kind of where we start the cultures and where everything gets expanded from. No, please do take take as many pictures as you'd like. Build is big enough. No, <laughs> but that's why we put the that's why we put the eighteen foot ceilings because um it just it, yeah it just makes more sense to go high. That's free space essentially when you're building a, a building you're paying for the footprint. You know? So it was very minuscule to add that height comparatively to the, the footprint of the building. So we just haven't got that far yet. You know, all in due time, but we're getting there. That's our autoclave purging. <laughs> 